Coming up on the ZTV Sports Report, we'll catch you up on everything you've missed over the winter break. From the women's basketball team to LeBron James checking out how good the men's basketball team is doing. And football coach Terry Bowden reveals 13 new faces added to the program. All that and more on the ZTV Sports Report, which starts now. Welcome to the ZTV Sports Report, your home for everything Akron Athletics. I'm Cameron Justice. And I'm Demir Epperson. Demir, it was a long winter break, but I'm so glad to be back on the Sports Report. Yeah, well, it's kind of my first time here, so yeah. Well, don't worry, buddy. I'll be right by your side for the whole ride. And our first stop is the women's basketball team, who didn't exactly have the greatest winter break. They sure didn't. Out of 11 games they played over break and leading into the new year, they only managed to win three of them. And unfortunately, None of those wins were conference games. Yeah, looking at their conference ranking after the Ohio game, it's not looking good for the team. No, but the team could possibly switch all around with their two games against Eastern Michigan and Ball State. And lucky for you, we got the highlights. Unlike the sign at the bottom of the screen, on Saturday, January 28th, the Zips took on the Eastern Michigan Eagles, not the Emus, in the jar. The story of this game was a 48-point outburst of Hannah Plybin and Alex Ricketts, which you could see early on as Ricketts uses the body to create space for two of her career-high 22 points on the night. Then, off the inbound and a plyb and miss, Haley Rhino fights for the loose ball and look at the dish to Greta Burry. Talk about a hustle play early on to help set the tone, especially for the defense. Now Megan Sefcik tips the pass and starts down the other way. After her first option wasn't open, she gives the rock to Ricketts who buries the three. Jumping ahead a bit. Here comes that Zips D again as Brittany Gordon collects the loose change and finds the trailing Ricketts for the easy layup. Next Eastern Michigan possession, Gordon again finds herself with the loose ball going down the court and this time finds Hannah Plybin for the deuce leading to an Eastern Michigan timeout. The second quarter can basically be summed up as the Greta Burry show as the Zips tried pounding the ball inside, especially with this finesse play off the pick and roll, leaving the defender in the dust, helping to lead the Zips to a 29-28 advantage at half. Third quarter now, freshman Sean A. Edmonds brings the ball up the court and see ya! Puts the defender on skates and takes the easy layup. Look at this move one more time, that's just absolutely filthy. Later on in the third is when this became the Hannah Plybin show as she rattles around one of her six threes for the game in her 26 point performance. Now to the fourth quarter and splash! Plybin from NBA range. She was shooting lights out all night. Finally, the Zips move the ball around well as Burry gets the assist on this Sefchik three, icing the game for the Zips on the next play after the Plyman 3 to help cap an 8-0 run by the Zips towards the end of the game. That would do it for this game with a score of 80-62 for the Zips women's basketball team helping them to their ninth win on the year. On February 1st, 2017, the Akron's women's basketball team took on Ball State University. Akron coming in at 9 and 10 on the season. To start the game on an out of bounds play, freshman Haley Renault comes off the screen and hits the jump shot. Now let me tell you, freshman Shauna Edmonds had a day. She gets a steal and attacks the basket and kisses it off the glass for two. Akron was up early, but Ball State was all over them. Haley Renault starts with the ball. She then passes it and goes off a double screen. And guess what? She is money from the three. Beautiful. She drives, she spins, and then dishes it off to Greta Berry, who buries the short two. 
like the pose at the point. Senior Hannah Plybin didn't play her best game, but she finished with 11 points and also moved in as seventh on the all-time scoring list with 1,545 career points, surpassing Pam Arnold. Early in the game, we saw Alex Rickett get shaken up in the game, but everything seemed okay as she later returned. The Zips were not 100% and it really showed. They were down big by 21 and was able to cut the lead down to nine. But after giving up 40 points in the paint and giving up 17 turnovers, the Zips just couldn't prevail. With that all being said, Ball State just absolutely hammers Akron 90 to 63. Let's hear what coach Jody Kess had to say about her team. You know, Ball State, uh, you know, they were the better team tonight and they deserved to win. They beat us up in, in every facet of the game. They killed us on the offensive glass. They had no problem scoring against us. Uh, we didn't do a very good job of moving the ball. Uh, we stood around too much. Uh, we took terrible shots and uh, just not a good game for us. With the young team and key players not 100% fit, I'll take a win and a loss. Yeah, you know, one win is better than no wins. Absolutely. We have to take a break, but when we return, we'll take a look at the men's basketball team. You're watching ZTV. Welcome back to the ZTV Sports Report. While everyone here at the university was away enjoying their winter break, the men's basketball team have been putting in the work. You said it, Cameron. The men's basketball team won all of their seven games over break, including those big conference games against Bowling Green, Western and Central Michigan, and Miami, Ohio. The team also remained undefeated in the Mid-American Conference, boosting their record to 4-0 and 14-3 overall after the Miami game. But they didn't stop there. No, they didn't. And lucky for you, we got the highlights. The Akron men's basketball team played the Ohio Bobcats on January 17th at the James A. Rhodes Arena. The Zips go into the game with a seven-game winning streak and a record of 14-3, 4-0 in the Mid-American Conference. The game would start off with Jackson with the ball, who would link up with Cheatham and hit nothing but net from behind the arc, giving the Zips a 3-0 starting lead. The Zips would play one of their best defensive games, with 27 defensive rebounds, 4 steals, and 5 blocks. Sophomore Ivy would be a nightmare for the Bobcats, continuing to attack the basket, dancing his way past the defender who grabbed his bucket, and later receive the ball from the bottom, and slam it home with a dunk, but picks up a technical through letting Ohio guard Simmons know who he is. Ohio's Campbell will then step up to the line and make both baskets and keep the Bobcats in the game with the halftime score being 38-35 Akron. The Bobcats will try to take the lead in the second half, but Akron Zips will just take off, scoring eight straight points with big dog Isaiah Johnson pulling the Zips ahead, marinating anyone who stood between him and the basket. This is what you gotta love about Big Dog. Look here, Isaiah receives the ball, and all the defenders are watching him, making sure that he doesn't try to muscle his way to the basket, including Utam's defender. And he realizes this, fakes a run to the basket, who is picked out by Isaiah, tosses him the rock, and he gets the easy three points. Both Isaiah and Ivory would finish the game with 15 points, and try him getting a double-double with 17 points and 13 defensive rebounds. Akron would hold on to the lead, winning the game 83-68, bumping their win streak up to eight games and registering their 26th consecutive win at home. Let's hear from both coaches and what they had to say after the game. Yeah, Ivy's improved a lot. And you know, it's funny, he didn't even attempt a three tonight, but his jump shooting has opened everything up for his game. And you can see he's a more confident kid. Clearly, he put in a lot of work this summer. Too, I think Quan is an example of what we've done with the program. He's played, he's played, he's put time in, he's put time in, he's put time in. And he's improved, 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 and now you can see the fruits of his labor. Jamon's another guy that nothing was given to him. Nothing was given to him, right? Nothing was given to Jamon last year. 
had a tough year, injured wrist, had uh, cast at the end of the year, knee surgery at the end of last year, and it kind of hurt his year. But in the long run, it's really helped him. Now he's becoming a guy that has to be on the floor for us. And what I mean by that is we need his length, we need his defensive ability with his athleticism, we need his drive ability and his explosiveness. And it's funny how that works. Last year he couldn't get out there and he had frustrations and probably was ready to kill me or quit or whatever, but he's earned it and it makes it even better now. And he's still got a lot of upside. He's not even halfway there yet. He's a guy that should become an all league player of the year possibility type of player. And these guys are in similar situations as far as that goes. The men's basketball team was back in action at the JAR Friday, January 20th. They were searching for their record 27th straight home win against Eastern Michigan University. The Zips were looking to do work from behind the arc from the start of the game. Quan drains the easy three. After a quick pass back, Josh Williams gets the ball to Isaiah Johnson, who draws the double team and zips a pass to Jamond Ivey, who hits a corner three. Pass game was on point also, as Robotham bounces an inside pass to Ivey, who throws the oop up for an Emmanuel jam. And one. And later, Utomi walks it right down Exchange Street for the two points off the layup. In the second half, big dog Isaiah, who led Zips scoring with 21 points, drives through contact for the bucket. Then later in the half, big dog demonstrates excellent movement off the ball in the paint. Though the Zips played better most of the evening, they were held scoreless for three minutes during the second half. But an alley oop to Ivy to break the slump put a shot in the arm of the team, which provided just enough spark for Ivy to lay down a commanding jam on the very next play that absolutely took the lid off the jaw. Take a second look at this play and see the great vision required of Antono Jackson to pick Ivy out in the corner over the defense's head to make this play. The Zips would go on to win this game 70 to 63 and maintain their perfect 6 and 0 record in the MAC as well as move on to being 15-3 and three overall in the regular season. The University of Akron's men's basketball team faced the University of Buffalo on January 28th at the JAR. The Zips had royalty in the house as the king himself, LeBron James, sat courtside to watch the game. Buffalo came out strong after the opening tip-off, while the Zips struggled to find the rhythm. Buffalo's Willie Connor scores the first three of the night. Akron's Antono Jackson drives to the paint, draws a foul, and gets the and one. The Bulls responded when Nick Perkins drives to the paint and scores over Quan Cheatham. Akron's Isaiah Johnson draws three defenders and passes to wide open Quan Cheatham, and he drains the three, cutting Buffalo's lead to two. Buffalo's Blake Hamilton was on fire all night for the Bulls, scoring 33 points in 35 minutes of action. Quan Cheatham nails the second three-pointer of the game. Isaiah Johnson starts to impose his will on the Bulls as he scores and draws a foul in the paint. Both the Zips and the Bulls traded buckets in the paint all night. At the half, the Zips led 43-40. Out of the break, the Zips continued to feed Isaiah Johnson the ball as he scores on a nice hook shot. Nick Perkins scores another three for the Bulls to keep the score tight. Isaiah Johnson backs into the paint and fakes out Nick Perkins for an easy layup. Perkins responds by driving past Johnson and Aaron Jackson to the paint and scores on a layup. Josh Williams was Akron's spark plug off of the bench as he shot 44% from behind the arc. Juan Cheatham got the crowd of almost 5,000 excited when he drains another three. Later in the half, Cheatham drains a deep three, causing Buffalo to call a timeout and getting the fans on their feet. Out of the timeout, Cheatham again drains another deep three to put the zips up nine. He would finish with seven threes and 31 points. Buffalo's bench outscored the zips 49-16 in large part to Hamilton's 33 points off of the bench. With the score tied at 90 with seconds left on the clock, the Zips went to Johnson and he draws a foul with 2.3 seconds left on the clock. 
Johnson makes his second free throw, and the Zips won a nail biter 91 90, extending their winning streak to 11 games. The thing I like about Quan is he cares about winning. Like, you know, like I told our guys, like, all those individual numbers don't mean anything if you don't win. But you don't think, you don't think people we talk about LeBron being here, you think LeBron's coming if we, if we don't win? He ain't coming if we're 3 and 18. Right? The Zips have won their last 12 games straight and remain undefeated in the James A. Rhodes Arena, or as we all know it, the JAR, for the past 28 games. The Zips would then go on to beat Northern Illinois 76-73, but would then suffer their first conference loss to the Ohio Bobcats in Athens, 70-85. to Yeah, but you gotta respect Bron Bron for coming out to see his hometown hoop it up. All hail the king. Mm-hmm. Well... We have to take our last break, but when we come back, we'll take a look at the football team's signing day event. Stay tuned. You're watching ZTV. Welcome back to the ZTV Sports Report. It may be winter, but the football team is already looking to strengthen its roster after going 5-7 and seven last fall. Akron football coach Terry Bowden held a signing day press conference open for students, faculty, and Zips fans to come and check out the new signings. Let's take a look. On February 1st, the Akron football team held an open event to the public at Info Stadium for the announcement of 13 new signings to the football team. Head football coach Terry Bowden was on the podium, along with former ZTV sports producer Scott Nixon. Coach Bowden expressed um, his satisfaction in the team's local recruitment program, signing seven athletes within Ohio, and five of them being from the Akron area. Uh, I think we've really hit a point where it's a, it's a, it's a turning point in, in our recruitment, especially in regard to local athletes. If you look at our, our 13 high school signings that we're announcing today, seven of those are from the local area. Um, all seven came to our football camps in the summer and committed most of them committed early based on after the bowl season, the bowl victory, we were able to get that excitement going. Uh, so we've got 13 high school seniors that we're allowed to announce today. Uh, seven of the, those local, interestingly enough, I think four of those from Florida. As y'all, any of y'all that have followed us know, our, our main recruiting area is, is, is our focus, Northeast Ohio and then South Florida, where we have strong ties down there with the speed that comes from the South. Came in in January, then this and new summer, day as a whole. We'll have 29 new faces on our team in which if we're not eligible to play last year, that will that are various degrees of one of those ways of signing people. And this is a this is a day and age which is so much of recruiting is done full year round now. So many commitments are done early. If you watched if you watch the news, there's much legislation in college football about an early signing date, which would very well likely happen in the future. Those things are because things happen so early. The crowd was also allowed to ask Bowman question regarding the quarterback role, along with the status of quarterback Tommy Wilson. Tommy Woodson would not be eligible to practice now because of surgery for all the way into the summer. Just to clarify, is that the number one spot he gets to compete for? Is it wide open? Is it a wide open? Well, well, the, well Tommy Woodson's not in practicing until June, so we know it's wide open. Cato hasn't got a rep. I think, I mean, he's, yeah, they all come here knowing they got an opportunity to come out here and play. When you play Division One football and, and uh, and you're going to compete in the spring for the, with a lot of reps. You're going, you're competing to play. Yeah. Well, I have to say, Cameron, I love being on the show already and being able to give everyone their Akron Zips news. Well, we're glad to have you here, Demir. That wraps us up for this edition of the ZTV Sports Report. Make sure to check us out on social media at ZTV Sports to keep you updated on Zips news and sports report stories. Thank you for tuning in to the ZTV Sports Report, your home for everything Akron athletics. I'm Demir Epperson. And I'm Cameron Justice. Both signing off. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. To find out how you can make Emmy winning media, visit the UA School of Communication online. ZTV. Make media. Make a difference.